Hello friends, today we are going to add massive flower power and color to the berm. You were with us just the other day when we installed all of the beautiful sprinter boxwoods as a defined border here on the berm. This was all Jerry's idea. This was his creation in his brain. And so we are bringing it to fruition today. So just to recap, right? So we were here and we have installed all of these um, they're on the small side which is what we want the sprinter box was to give us a defined border defined edges for these annual flower beds this is the side of the berm that faces the house and so when we sit on our front porch or look out the front of our house we will see all of this beautiful color at this time we are planning on these three sections these three flower beds to stay as annual plantings that may change in the coming years, but we do enjoy our beautiful annual color. And so we just thought this would be a really fun area to bring in those annual colors and we can completely switch up the color scheme or the type of plants from year to year. This year, however, we are going with loads of supertunias. We absolutely are. So the two flower beds that are gonna be the beds that are inside of the Sprinter Boxwoods, right there by the Yoshino cherry trees, we are going to go with the beautiful jazzberry. So this is Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. It is the newest Vista on the series or in the series, and it makes a great landscape petunia. So we first saw this in mass planting when we went to go visit our friends at Pleasant View Gardens up in Loudoun, New Hampshire. They're kind of uh, famous because they have this pergola that they t uh, plant the top of it with and they had jazzberry just a solid jazzberry in there and it made such a massive statement so we are continuing with that jazzberry is a little bit more of a richer pink kind of a, a raspberry color if you will but nice big beautiful blooms does great in the landscape so that is going to go in the center of the boxwoods now for a little bit of color contrast we are going to go with the beautiful this is the uh, supertunia vista snowdrift and it is a beautiful pure white flower so what we're going to do with that we don't have a, a ton of that that is going to go along the edges of the inside of the boxwoods and then you're going to have the jazzberry within that so you'll have the green of the boxwood then the white of the snowdrift and then the interior will be the jazzberry that way everybody pops off of each other and looks fantastic so then in the center bed that is kind of the v shape that's going to be the supertunias that are going to be in front of the summerific holy grail hibiscus remember we have three of those straight line against the fence now just to give remember a little bit of perspective right the summerific holy grail is going to have basically near black foliage with massive red flowers on it and they're going to get to be like four to five feet wide and about three to four feet tall so nice and wide so they're going to fill in up against the fence and just be stunning what we're going to do is the brand new supertunia mini vista yellow so yellow is one of the three new introductions um, on the mini vista line this year last year we trialed it and this year we are planting it in mass it is a beautiful nice petite little flower on it the mini vistas do have a little bit of a smaller flower but they make a great impact they're not as vigorous of a spreader as your vistas but still have a nice spread on them we've got a i mean just like a truckload of these gorgeous things so we are going to fill in that interior with these mini vista yellows on the placement of them obviously with your vistas you can spread them out a little bit further because they are more vigorous and have more of a spread and then with your yellows if you want full coverage then you're going to want to plant them together a little bit closer if you um, want to see the individual mounds then of course obviously you can spread them apart when we created the berm back in the fall we added just like truckloads of compost to this soil 
So we are not amending the planting beds per se with a lot of compost right now. What Jerry has already done is gone through and laid down some biotone on top of the soil. Um, and this mulch, remember, is not mulch per se as far as like a, like a solid hardwood mulch. It is a blend of, I think it was, what, of 40% compost and then 60% aged pine bark fines. So people will say, oh, you're planting directly in the mulch. Well, it's not the traditional mulch that you think of. It's more of a compost blend. So we're gonna use our power planter augers and we are going to just attack this. We are expecting some thunderstorms here in the next hour or so. So we are gonna try our best to get this done before the rain comes. We are entering into more of the summer weather here in North Carolina which means you never know what's gonna happen, right? You think it's gonna be one thing and then five minutes later it's another and then it's another. So we are gonna to try to move with purpose so that way we can get it done. So if it does rain, then the petunias will already be in the ground and be very, very happy. So we're gonna see what we can get done before the rains come, if they come. First things first, we've gotta get all these beautiful plants out here and get them placed. <laughs> Right, my friends so today's project is complete and i am not gonna lie this was a massive massive undertaking and it took four adults to do this in uh, two and a half three hours um, but we got all of the annuals in there and man it looks fantastic could not be happier with it again it was as far as the planting goes it was very simple right we had two of the power planter augers with the five inch uh, drill bits on them and you had, we were working in teams of two. One person is auging the holes, the next person is taking them out and popping them in the hole. So we kind of worked our way through there. Um, so it was really simple on that aspect. It was just a large number of plants to put into the ground. But as far as the design goes, very happy with it. Of course, we have the white petunias on the outside with the jazzberries in the middle. And then we were not planning on putting white petunias in front of the mini vista yellows, but that space was bigger than what we were thinking and we ran out of the mini vista yellow. So thankfully I had some mini vista whites. And so I was able to run up to the greenhouse and fill in, which actually worked out pretty kind of cool because then all the whites are connected. 
So it'll be a fun, interesting design, but having those mini Vista yellows in that bed and then having the Holy Grails behind them. Now, right now, of course, the Holy Grails are kind of disappearing because even though they are a nice size right now, they're not, of course, a mature size. And this berm seems to kind of just swallow plants up whole. So just imagine that those Holy Grails are gonna be almost almost touching each other at mature size and at least up to the second rung of the fence maybe even up a little bit higher with your summerifics the more water you give them and the more sun the happier they are and the faster they grow so they're going to fill in nicely and then of course though that, that foliage of the holy grail will look beautiful with the purple plum that is behind it so all of those colors kind of tie in together but i'm glad that we put the yellows there because it just brings a bit of brightness big red flowers from the holy grail then the yellow and then of course the mini vista whites and then the boxwoods are just fantastic right gives those beds nice year after year after year structure they're going to grow they're going to grow together we are going to keep them um, pretty trimmed so we want to have a nice defined kind of hedge with those sprinter boxwoods it was just an absolute genius idea that jerry had coming up with this design could not be happier with it i really cannot wait to go sit on the front porch so that we can see this from a distance and see how it all comes together but i was laying out the jazzberry and um, the white petunias and we had two plant deliveries today so he was over there just kind of managing that and when he came was coming back over i was like hold on to your socks and he was like what and i was like because they're getting ready to get knocked off uh i absolutely love it i think it looks great irrigation wise so josh and roman have gone to lunch they're going to come back and begin the irrigation process of laying down the pipe in here we already have the bones in, so all they have to do is just connect to the pipe that is connected to the PVC in the ground, connect to that, and then wind the irrigation through here. So that's gonna be um, a whole process that will take a little bit of time. Once they get that done, we'll probably come back and just do an overview of what they've done, give you an update on the plants, maybe like in a week or so. That way, because a lot of people ask, like with irrigation, how you lay it out, how do you decide how much irrigation to put down, so forth and so on. So that way we can come back and kind of give you an idea of what works for us here in our North Carolina Zone 7B uh, garden. Could not be happier. It's going to be gorgeous. So as always, we hope you have found this fun, informational, and inspirational. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.